Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4. And today spawning southwest corner of the map playing in red, we've got Louis MT playing as the Marlians and his opponent. In the northeast playing in blue, we have got 3D Cat playing as the Abbasid Dynasty. Welcome everyone to Coastal Cliffs. I hope you guys are having a great morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And can we seeing a gliding scout there? Did you guys spot that? That was strange. Either way, hope you're doing well. And uh, we're going to see some good Age of Empires 4 action today as part of the EGC TV. Elite Classic. Now, two civilizations that going toe-to-toe -to -toe could be exciting. Malians versus the Abbasid Dynasty. i got to say, in this matchup, I feel it's a bit tricky for the Abbasids. Like, the Malians are incredibly strong at the moment. And I think out of the two civilizations, they're the civilization that will pull the strings, will probably be the civilization that says, hey, I'm going to do my thing. It's going to be up to you to try and stop me. The question is, will 3D Cat be able to stop what the Malians are looking to achieve today? Now, what's kind of exciting as well, the Marlins do have some great units, you know, the Donsos, Javelin Throwers. I think something that kind of hurts the Abbasid Dynasty is a lot of the uh, military does sort of lean into the Archer line of things, right? You've got the, the Military Wing, you've got Boot Camp, you've got Composite Bows. Like, composite Bows is a really strong upgrade and uh, you know, tech for the Abbasids. But you're going up against possibly Javelin Throwers, so it's not really something you want to necessarily tech too highly into. And so it does limit the options for the Abbasids. Maybe a second town set to play, you know, you get fresh foodstuffs, cheaper villagers, a cheaper town set with the economic wing, possibly. But again, does it really feel like it's a good idea to try and outboom the Malians? Yeah. When they've got the cow boom, it's so strong. It comes online in that castle age with the Grand Fulani Coral. And they get the landmark, it's incredibly powerful. It, it just feels tricky, right? And bear in mind as well, like, then how do you think about playing this one as the Abbasids? Do you look to be aggressive in the feudal age? Possibly. But uh, you don't necessarily have huge amounts going for you, considering that the Marlians are pretty decent with the units of the Feudal Age too. It just feels like Marlians all round are incredibly strong in this matchup. What is incredibly strong is it's got a lot of sheep, 13 of them there, 3D Cat. And of course, he's relying on the berries. The Abbasid Dynasty do get that berry bonus, extra berries, and also files to gather rate on that. So we're looking good. Also, bear in mind the gold spawns is something key and important to think about. Guess what? The Marlians have a back gold. Going to get the Mount Zakori with six villagers. Miniature Wing as the option for the Abbasids. That will help him put some pressure on. We'll get access to two Spearmen, two Archie Rangers. And is likely to move out on the map. Now the question is, what can he deny, right? It has to go through the right side. And, you know, if, if the Marlins do wall this up on the right side, this is going to be massive. Like, is it going to protect the deer camp, berries, gold? This map generation for the Marlians is looking so, so good. I mean, to be fair, the Abbasids are not too bad either. Walling up to the side, protect the gold and the stone. But ultimately, it feels like the Abbasids have to be aggressive anyway. So, you know, really, will they commit to walls? I'm not so sure. Kind of interesting one. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be a, a fun one to watch for sure. Either way, I'd like to say a very big thank you for everyone supporting on YouTube or Twitch. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Help me uh, keep things running along, ticking along with the content creation. I've been doing a lot of casting and streaming actually recently, so hopefully you should be getting at least a video a day for quite some time. At least a casted game every day. Scout moving across. Going back home for Cat. Feud Lage starts up for both players and we should be able to see the units popping out soon already. Leading the line there, the Speedman. But of course, it's been difficult to get too much value. Mill is up and running, going to get the wheelbarrow, and then quite possibly looking to get some production. There it is, there's the archery range, so going to be able to get some uh, javelin throws. It's a nice move, I think it's a really nice good opening, of course, going up against spearmen and archers. Archers totally countered, and the javelins have good range on them, that they can even do pretty much good damage on the spearmen, of course. It's such an all-round incredibly good unit. And there it is, queues up the javelin throwers. Back on uh, quite heavy on stone, so expecting that second town setter for the Abbasid. So maybe he is looking to match like for like in terms of a boom, but it's, uh, I'll be curious to see how this one pans out. Likely to be relatively passive for both players at this stage, then, because of the strategy that's involved. Whenever you do see a player going two town centers, it's usually a bit more of a passive one. Unless the opponent's being aggressive, which of course the Marlins probably won't be for maybe until the early castle age. That's when they really start to go a bit crazy. 
We have to get those pit mines on the west side as well. Getting the second town centre a little bit further forward on the deer camp. I understand we want to keep that safe and secure. Awkward spot, of course, though, the fact that it's so far forward. But he feels like he needs the deer camp food, and understandably so. It's not as if the ambassadors get any sort of farming bonus. And he's looking to take that now. I like the fact he's taking it now, actually. Um, although he's getting a TC, so it's fine. So he's going to have the static defences, but plenty of sheep to rely on if he needs it. But with fresh food stuff, so he's going to be able to pump out units. So maybe, I mean, to be fair, it could be two towns under feudal age pressure from the Bassers. Not necessarily needing to go to the Castle Age. But the fact that he's got fresh food stuffs means that he get put villages out very nicely and cheaply. Here comes a cattle ranch, though. The booming going to be starting up for the Malians. Yep, double cattle, double, uh, double mill, double cattle boom. And the second archery range being built. I mean, it's not out of the question, by the way, that Louis MT and the Marlins can be aggressive in the feud. I just feel like Marlins can be very adaptive. Like, they can have a good feudal age pressure, especially because they've got some cow boom going on behind it. And it means that not only are they being aggressive, but they're scaling their economy. And look at the walls are going up on the right side. Exactly what it needs to do to protect their economy. And maybe there, therefore, is not going to look to be aggressive. Like when you see a play go for walls, it typically means they're going to play a little bit greedy. Unless it's just such a no-brainer wall, which to be fair... So pretty much no brain of wool. Now second town center is up and run, running for the Abbasid. So probably going to get the village count relatively quickly. Going to get an outpost in that forward position. Get the extra vision and also a bit of protection. Both players spending everything they've got. But bear in mind the cow boom. You know it's starting. This is where it gets scary. Because okay, whilst he only has four villages on food. It's getting 300 per minute. got more cows than he can put in a cattle ranch so probably looks to spread that out a little bit gonna go for a stable it does look like it's actually really, uh feudal age aggression like he's committing a little heavily double arch range and stable considering he's not up against much military himself i think the malians and louis mt might be looking to be a bit aggressive golden age tier one is in play for the abbasids it's gonna want to get those in quickly actually because it really helps them out golden age tier one gonna be getting an extra 15 percent gather rate of villagers Tier 2, extra research speed, and tier 3, gather rate 20% for all resources. Research, research but 20%, and production speed 20% also. Yeah, Marley's really walling up. I mean, it's, it's curious, actually. He's kind of doing both, right? He's putting a bit of pressure with the production. And also making sure he's walling off. Curious. Walsman going to chase down the scout. That guy is going to be a goner. Especially with the spearman, yeah, he's dead. Leaving the space for the Grand Fulano Coral. Oh, he's going to get a full wrap around it as well. Kind of crazy. Village count 40 to 32, but obviously that doesn't take into consideration the cattle boom. How's it going, Askeladd and chat? How you doing? Hope you're doing well, buddy. If you're watching on YouTube and thinking, what am I talking about? It's because I'm live streaming on YouTube, uh, Twitch these days. It's worth checking out if you want to come and say hi live. I'll leave a link in the video description. You can come and catch me out there. It's uh, always quite nice to chat with you guys. Especially in between games. I do chat in games sometimes, as you've been noticing, but especially in between the games. All right, so for heading further forward. Looking to do some damage. Corvinus, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a great stream, my dude. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, by the way, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure... Hey, if you've been watching YouTube, it's quite likely you've watched a couple of my casts. And you've, it's quite likely you've seen Corvinus play, right? And if you didn't know, which I'd be very surprised if you didn't know, as you will know now, he, he does stream live on Twitch. It's definitely something you want to see because not only does he do like, you know, your standard 1v1s, but he does a lot of quirky stuff, the fun stuff as well, custom games, nomads, you name it. We all know Corvinus. So I'd be surprised if you don't know. And so, yeah, I mean, if you haven't, if, if in the off chance you haven't heard of Corvinus, you're going to want to check that out. But thank you so much for the raid again there, Corvinus. Appreciate it, my dude. 
Uh, it's always interesting watching his games. Uh, maybe, by the way, I was thinking, guys, I was thinking about hosting some show matches. That, you know, when the new DLC came out, Sultan's Ascend DLC, I had a couple, I had one show match, I think. Or two match show matches, actually. And I'm thinking, obviously, over time now, uh, my channels have been growing. Maybe I can think about committing a little bit more hours into streaming, a little bit more hours into YouTube content. So maybe we get some show matches on. That'd be kind of cool. The reason I mention that, because obviously Corvinus is definitely going to be one of those players I'd love to reach out to. He will do love seeing Corvinus play good strategy, often coming out from his games. Speaking of strategy, this is a lot of unit, this is a lot of production. Holy moly! It's kind of interesting because like the timing of it is curious, right? He's not actually teching up just yet, but it's getting a lot of production. Maybe he's prepping for it. I mean, he's got a lot of food and gold in the bag. I think it is a castle age, but he's just getting ready, right? He might actually get a lot of feudal units and then scale them in the castle age, which is not a bad idea. I think the Marlins do that really well because they've got the javelin throwers. And they've got Donzos. They've got a couple of software. They've got the units that they want. It's not a case where, you know, some civilizations, when they tech up, they want the heavily armored units. They, they need to wait for the tech up. Like, for example, some examples could be if you're going off for Ghulam as the Abbasid Dynasty, you need to tech up before you can get any of them. What the miners can do, they can keep on pumping, get to the castle age. He starts to tech up now. And whilst he gathers resources, he keeps on pumping units and maybe just upgrades them to the veterancy level. Could be an option. We'll have to see. Yeah, the Marlin's definitely scaling that way. Does have a software on the right side. Just keeping an eye on things. Outpost going on the woodline, by the way. Denying that quite significantly. Now, he does have two woodlines to pick from. This was the, what is going towards now. And I wonder whether Cat will look to pressurize that. It does feel like Cat feels he's under pressure to do so. But it does feel like he's going to go to the castle stage relatively soon himself. Really benefiting from the fresh foodstuffs, the cheaper villagers means that you know it's got a bit of food in the bank left over but look at the food coming in from louis mt that's 1000 food per minute that's going to scale really well but going up against Sulfur the horseman he's doing some damage but he can't really engage with that totally cleanly he's picking off the scout now and trying to micro this as best he can does have the numbers advantage but he need to back away doesn't want to take the fight just yet especially as he's taking up the eco wing Gets the arrow slits inside the, the outpost. I mean, could even potentially wall that in, by the way. And that'd be kind of curious to see if he decides to do that. Just give a bit more longevity on it. Lumt reaching that castle age now. And immediately gets the tech ups. Veterancy for the javelin throwers. Veterancy for the suffer. Veterancy, or increased armor rather, for the suffer as well. Imported armor. Double barracks. So this is what we're talking about, how some civilizations will need to wait to that castle age before they get certain units that they want. Gulam, in particular, has a good handy thing I, I mentioned that particular unit, because that's possibly what it's going to go for. This one's starting to move on forward. Could I go on to the, uh, move on to the berries? The villagers backing away from that position? Has to, really. The question is, will Louis Empty have enough to defend this with? He does have a decent number of stuff, a veterancy upgraded in. Looks like Cat's just going to back away for now. And he might look to just torch this down. Does have a good amount of torch damage coming out. No sort of uh, fortification on that just yet. Spearman possibly going to challenge this. Javelin Throw is going to get some damage. It's on fire. Doesn't have any villagers to repair this. So we'll go down eventually. Good bit of damage. Although the Spearman going right on top of the sofa. Sofa just diving on in. I'm not so sure about this from the Mali ends actually. The decent number of spearmen, or they're now on the retreat. The ch trouble is, is the Abbasid have to retreat fully because the uh, veteran archers, or the veteran javelin throwers, rather, they're going to get on top of the archers and then the spearmen. Uh, that would not be good because if the spearmen go down, the software will pounce. So, yeah, the Abbasids, they fully retreat now back at home. He's pushing on in. Decent number of units for both players. I mean, Luomti doesn't necessarily have enough to completely, like, really push this hard, but it's going to get some value with the javelin throwers on the range. Diving in with the sofa. Going to kill the villager walling up. So the walls have been denied. Does have an outpost, but that will possibly go down soon with the torch damage from the sofa, but maybe it gives an opportunity for 3D cat to pounce on this. Spearman trying to push away the sofa. They are doing it. Horseman as well. I'm not so sure he has enough. Louis MT is, is trickling in units, though, to be fair. He's got a lot of production behind this. 1,400 food per minute. That's the Dynasty actually outstripping that, getting 2,000 food per minute, which is curious. Kind of interesting to see. Wasn't expecting that. 
Spearmen now have been upgraded. The Bastard Darcy actually typically have some of the best Spearmen in the units in the game, rather, with the Phalanx upgrade. Increases the range of attack, and you can see how much value they're getting. I think, I mean, Louis has got a lot of cavalry, but there's a lot of Spearmen for the Bastards. And great Spearmen at that. He's taking the fight. Spearmen going to brace, and, well, yeah, he just can't, he can't really get a good clean fight on this, Louis. He has to back away. He's going to need more Javelins, going to need more Archers. Got to get rid of that Spearmen mass. And the great thing for 3D Cap is all the villages are making, they're super cheap. Farming transition, they're coming in, so it could be a window of opportunity here if Louis Empty can keep up the production. Bear in mind, no farming transition really needed for the Marlins with the cow boom. The cow boom has been established pretty, pretty quickly. Right from the early parts of the game, Spearman going through. Archer numbers, though, decent for Louis, so should get some value. He's still charging on through. But if he doesn't, I mean, he might have to go behind the walls. But he keeps pushing forward with the spears, and every time he turns around and fights, Louis Empty loses a couple of sofa here and there. That is not ideal. And he's just gonna burn he's gonna burn through. Mate, the bass is just 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 gonna burn on through and walk on through. This could be dangerous. I mean, the range unit numbers are starting to dwindle. Added in a couple of crossbows, which will definitely do work against the sofa as well. Really leading the line. Spearman. Getting so much value. And bear in mind he's actually got the second ranged armor upgrade. That's actually playing a big role in this fight. Oh, peeled off a couple of spearmen on the villagers. But getting a massive wrap around the Marlins, getting absolutely hacked and slashed with those spearmen. Sofa, they should be able to win this fight eventually because there's a decent number of them. Oh, that's a nice bait. I mean, the thing is, I don't know if that split up was worth it in the end for the Bassids. If he grouped together, maybe could have taken a better fight, but he went for the villager kills. He did get a couple, but maybe not enough. The fight really spiraled out of control there in the end. Now, it's the turn of the Marlians to be aggressive, potentially. Pendulum, possibly a swung? No, he's going to play this a bit more defensively. Villagers now having a transition. Plenty of farms coming up. He's going to need a bit more, though, of course. The action faction in the early castle age, that's for sure. Now, plenty of gold coming in. Passively for the Marlians. Three pit mines, as well as the landmark, of course, the Mansa Quarry. Puts them in a good spot. And as we head into the middle of the late game, one thing you have to consider is the population efficiency of the cattle. Allow the Marlians just to pump out units. Could actually get a couple more cattle ranches and a couple of cows. Looking to break through though, Louis, he's not happy resting behind the Palisade walls. He wants to get some damage out, and why not when he got this army? Pushing on in. Bassids, are they ready? Did have the early warning system, of course, with the Palisades. Trying to get a, a Manganel on the field. Can build on the ground. Should go up in time. Or maybe not. Actually, Sofa might dive on this. Wait, this is a bit tricky situation. The Gulams are still trying to build. Does come on nine. Should get a shot off on the Javelins, but they are on spread formation, so this should be okay. Only gets a hit on maybe two or three of them, which is massive. Manganel still alive. Sofa going around the back though this time. Completely ignoring the Manganel. But the Manganel does get a good shot on the Javelins. Could get another. Losing a couple of villagers on the woodland. But with double TC, maybe he won't mind. Again, Manganel's getting good value. Gulam chasing that down. A couple of spearmen just to protect the Manganel. To make sure the Sofa don't get on top of that. Sofa going on the back lines though. Picking off things as they pop out. I mean, ultimately, he clears this up. There's a bit of a push from Louis, but he threw away a lot of units. But he is raiding heavily around the back. Look at that Sofa there. Sofa there on the west side. Putting villagers off massively there. Getting massive kills. But he does still have their 80 villagers on the on the case, on the on the economy. But definitely good harassment for Louis. But he's going to have to build up that army once again. But behind this, he's getting good map control. I wonder if he's going to start getting some of those relics, right? Because he's in the castle age after all. And he's got good map control. Now could be a good time. Mangano deploys. Takes out that last, last unit. But yeah, certainly the Spearman got a lot of value in the early parts of the uh, the engagements for the Abbasid Dynasty. Things are starting to change a little bit now. It is now going for the Archers as well with the Composite Bow. So we did mention in the early stages of the game, maybe the Archers won't be so relevant. But actually, ultimately, at this point, there aren't that many Javelins 
there for the Marlians. So actually, I think it works quite well. And especially the Marlians going for Archer themselves. Curious. I take my words back. I think the Archer is now going to be working pretty well in this matchup. In this particular way, it's panning out. Tried to deny the walls being placed once again. Did get his cheeky Palisades there. Louis, but he's going to wall around it. Oh no, that's oh that's devastating cat. Just one suffer. The bears have all been taken anyway. One and two suffer raiding really well. 27 villagers killed. This is starting to hurt him a little bit. Oh no, Manganel completely. Oh well, just about managed to save it in the end. Kind of fortunate. And actually, oh no, no, it's going to be a massacre. So many villagers dying. These raids from Louis. In the last two to three minutes have been absolutely fantastic. These stuff are still alive on the woodline. And he's incurred so many, so many dead villagers. 38 in total. This is huge, by the way, because now Louis MT is 63 villagers versus 71. But don't forget, he has got the cow boom. Baz is going to try and torch their way through. Has Gulams. Has Manganels. Sofa, though, still raiding. Looks like 3D cap. Just wants to push on in. Now one thing you could do is actually go for the cows. If he takes out the cows and kills them on the cattle ranch. Or destroys the cattle ranch and then kills the cow on top of it. He can't build the cattle ranch easily. Well at all really. He has to take the carcasses out. Doesn't really have enough units here it feels. Does lose. He's still got one mangonel though. Keeping it alive as much as possible. The Malians diving on in. Can't get the mangonels down. The one mangonel is getting good damage. Coming from the right side. Does he flank around? No he doesn't. He's going to just take the head on engagement. Wallalo coming off. I don't think he gets is a distraction more than anything. Loses the uh, the Imam in the end. Well, Manganel does go down in the end, but yeah, he's able to back away. The Musa Fadi war is pushing that back heavily. Gulam's no use anymore against that. But Sofa still killing, still raiding. 48 villages is bleeding. That is not good. He tried to push in the middle, but unfortunately, behind all of that, he's been hemorrhaging. He's not been able to stop the bleeding at all. Suffer on the farming transition. Trying to get a third town center. Makes a lot of sense. He wants to try and boom back up again. But unfortunately, it's going to take a bit of time. The question is, does he have time? Doesn't feel like it's on his side. And yeah, these palisades going up. Going to deny the rewall. And this is looking a bit tricky for Cat, I've got to say. Marlin stepping up. Ramping up the pressure. The food income really diminished. Down to 900 per minute for the Abbasids. Coming down because of the raids. Now that's looking rough. Great use of the sofa, I've got to say, for the Malians. Couple of Musafadi warriors. Working hard. And this is the issue. Like, he's everywhere. Louis is all across the map. Going around the back again. Just one or two sofa here and there. That's looking rough. He's killed 54 villagers in total. That's been the difference maker in this game, you feel. Sofa. It's just going to fight with the villagers at this point. Still still surviving though. Yeah, this is looking rough now. He's behind the villagers. He's got the cow boom. Marley is looking in a really good spot. I think Cat's going to need a bit of a miracle to survive in this one. Can he find a way? He's holding on for now. Does have three town centers to be fair and with fresh food stuffs. It won't be too taxing on that economy. But this certainly looks a bit tricky. Sofa going to go onto the, the wood line. Spearman chasing. He's going to dive in, take a couple of villagers. Spearman should be able to... I mean, if they catch up on that, the Sofa will perish quickly. But if Louis can keep them alive, keep them skirting around, here we find. The big thing about this is actually Louis is going to have a lot of positioning on the map. Could just secure the stone veins and get some keeps up. We'll have to see. Doesn't have any stone coming in just yet. It's got plenty of food and gold in the back. Take a look at that. 2,000 of each. Going to get the sacred sites. There are only two sacred sites on the map, so possibly getting that wind condition is an option. Oh, the Sofa, they weren't paying attention. The Spearman going to take them out. Louis wasn't paying attention for a second. He loses his army, but he's just done so much damage up to now. Some great raids. He's starting to stabilize once again, though, 3D cap. But behind all of this, the space has been given for the Malians to go up to the next stage with the Fort of the Huntress. Going to get access to the uh, middle goals, keep them safe and secure and protected. It's a gold income. Can be very secure. 
This is curious, actually. I expected to see 8,000 gold veins on this map, but it's actually 4,000 gold veins, two of them in the middle. Very short of gold, this map. Interesting. And of course, he's got the, the trade post completely protected. Nice play here. Slow, methodical, and I think he's making it work really well. Maganel does deploy, though. Gets a huge hit on those units. Doesn't take any out, but takes a lot of HP. Maybe 3D Cat senses something. Obviously, he's up against an Imperial Age army. It feels like Cat has to do some damage. If he doesn't, I mean, he, he, he's, an, he's an age behind, right? He's never going to get to the Imperial Age at this rate. Going to be difficult for him. So instead, he's just going to look to do, do some damage as much as he can. Spearman chasing. Got a lot of archers with poison arrow. And Mustafadi Warriors. I mean, ultimately, Louis Empty just have to wait for the upgrades to come in and take one big fight. This is not looking great for Cat. He's got a timer on him. He's got to do damage. He's got to do it now. Going to burn through with the Gulam on the north. Burning through the veteran Musafadi Warriors. And he has broken through, though. Louis needs to hold on. If he just takes one big fight and fights this off, you feel like it will be the GG. It feels like this is the last push that the Bastard have on them. Bit indecisive. Thought about going for the cattle, but decides to go... Yeah, it's a massive trap. This is huge. Louis coming in from the west and the east. Maganel has been caught. That's not great. He might keep it alive just about. Mr. Fadi Warriors just have to back away. But he's kind of trapped, and he's not going to be able to get any reinforcements anytime soon. Maganel, though, this time on the right side. They're on spread formation. They're going to dive on in. He's, wait. Yeah, he's losing units there, too. He split his army so well, Louis Empty. Throughout the whole game, the raid's coming in as well on the back line. I think Cat's losing villagers back at home, but either way, on the front line, he's losing on the front as well. That's not great. Mustafadi Warriors chomping through those archers. They're supposed to be taken down by the archers, but no. He's got the archers backing them up for the Marlins with Poison Arrow, dishing out all sorts of damage. And yeah, this is not looking great. He does have a good number of Gulam, though, so could potentially win this fight overall. It really does depend. Oh, no, maybe not. Mustafadi Warriors coming in. The Mustafadi Warriors will absolutely slay those Gulam. Taking the fight decisively, even has a Musafadi Gunner in the mix, and he's going to lose that fight massively. Louis MT, he's taking the game. He's mushing, moving forward. 3D Cat on the ropes. He does have a good number of villagers, but again, it's being raided left, right, and center. The big thing is he's on the back foot, and I think this time he's up against an Imperial Age army. Being in the Castle Age, if he focuses on this gold, gold will be denied. And 3D Cat is in all sorts of problems. Bear in mind, Sacred Sight Timer has been activated. Does have a couple of archers trying to focus on the uh, Mr. Fadi Warriors, but they will break through in time. And these are elite archers, guys. It's going to be very difficult to deal with. Even Manganels at this point? He'll need a couple of them at least. Looks like it's going to be a calm before the storm. Cat just maybe looking to try and mount one last resistance, one last fight. Maybe can tip the tides again. But 73 villagers have been lost. I mean, credit to Cat. He's kept up the villager production, managed to keep ahead. And whilst the villagers are cheaper, it's still a cost attributed to them. Could have been spending that food on military instead. And the thing is, Marnie just feels like they've got everything against them. Every sort of counter unit they need, they've got it. Mustafadi Warriors for the Gulam. He's got his own archers, elite archers for the archers that Cat has. He's taking the fight, trying to get an outpost of villagers and ends it back away. Mustafadi Warriors on top of the Gulam. They are taking a couple of damage though from the archers. If the Mustafadi Warriors don't survive, that could become a problem. Gulams will tank against the archers, but these are elite archers, guys. They got full upgrades on them. That is not looking good. And the archers will even take out the, the Gulam. Ultimately, the Castle Age units versus Imperial Age units standing and fighting. Now, Cat should have the numbers advantage, and he will have composite bows, which will definitely help. But Poison Arrow is coming in clutch for the Marlians, and they are elite upgraded archers. So, overall, will be okay. Villagers garrisoning inside the outpost. Could this be another decisive fight? Even if he doesn't win this fight on the west side, look at this. Musafadi Warriors riding in on the, on the right side, and that's a hemorrhaging. I mean, that's just, that's just not good. He's just going to lose a lot of units that way. And he's still got Mr. Fadi Warriors in the back, raiding heavily. He's held off on this outpost location, but again, he's just, uh, he's hurting. Don't forget, he has to get on the mid-map. He's got to somehow deactivate Sacred Site. It doesn't look likely. 
going around the back with three moves of Fadi Warriors. And this is buying a lot of time. So whilst he's not getting sort of critical blows here, Louis, what he is doing is keeping the Abbasid back at home. Just allowing that ticking timer of the Sacred Sight just to keep on dropping down. Oh, Mustafari Rose again going on the villagers. We've been picked away from the range, by the ranged units, but does get two kills eventually. Coming in with another wave. Desperately trying to wall everything up. Group of archers on the west side, pulling away a couple of ghulams to deal with it, but again, is struggling to deal with it. Trickle of red, pushing on forward. Keeps going on the sacred sites and the stones, so things escalating. Things snowballing, and Louis MT has the villager lead. He has uh, the position, and he's got the tech lead as well. How's it going, Jigglypuff? Yes, that's right, that is a, a Twitch viewer name. Also known as a beloved Pokemon, of course. Wait, he's moving north. Wait, wait, Louis MT, where's he sending these 27 villagers? He's trying to turn out the wall going up. That's kind of funny. I mean, he backs away now, just as well. No need to do anything crazy. What is this? These walls, man. Holy smokes. Looks like he's saving up for another keep. Coming around the north. I mean, he probably just... Oh, no, he moved, clicked. He didn't attack, move. So he's going to lose a couple of archers. Could just stand and fight. and He won't win it, though, but... That's unfortunate. He will stand and fight now. Not quite enough to one-shot or even two-shot a Gulam. But he's heading forward with Mustafadi Warriors again. Raiding on in. And uh, this is hard. Cat is hard stuck in the in the castle. Well, I take that back. He's going for the culture wing. Okay, he's taking up to the next stage, but he's had to invest a lot of resources to do so. Does have a good standing army, 66, but he's just sending everything now, Louis. The trouble for Louis is not had a sustained push with siege. That's kind of tricky. So he's not done any infrastructural damage, but ultimately all he needs to do is just push on units. He's got four minutes on the sacred site timer, and somehow 3D Cat has to decap a sacred site. It feels like that's the win condition he's playing to at this point. Coming with a ram. Does have a toll outpost. Does have a keep. He's trading as well. 40 gold coming in on the trade. Has a decent number of traders. 24 of them. So yeah, gold coming in nicely that way. Something that obviously the Abbasids just can't leverage at the moment. It does have a thousand gold coming in. Does have the three relics as well. Culture wing coming in. But it's going to need the tech ups. And doesn't have the food in the bank he wants. It does have... 200 population though, so 3D cats are pumping out units, and obviously fresh food stuff has really helped with that. To keep the villager cost down, can pump the rest of the food that remains into units, but mostly trash units it seems, mostly spearmen. Sacred Sight still intact, 3 minutes on the clock, he's going to need a big push. I think th th this is the issue, like he has to wait for the upgrades he feels before he can push out. It does take another 30 seconds, so we'll have another two and a half minutes before he really has to push out. But if he fights and loses an army, it doesn't necessarily feel like he can replace it too quickly. Getting it... Oh no, he's going to have to get a madrasa as well to try and get the elite army tactics. He didn't have one pre-built, and that's a problem. Time is not on his side. Warrior scouts coming in. Elite warrior scouts. Villagers scampering away. Biology coming in. Follow the empty for those scouts. But now is go time, guys. Here come the elite upgrades. He hasn't clicked it yet. He's got the resources, too. Spearman brace against the warrior scouts. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, the way that Louis MT is playing this is smart. He's, he's making Cat make a decision. Like, if Cat moves out, if, as soon as he moves out, he'll be raided to death. So if he doesn't lose to the sacred site, he'll be losing to a lack of villagers. And lack of economy. Warrior Scouts on the back line. And yeah, the Abbasids having to commit army to that. Having to use all the elite archers to clear it all up. Because he can't leave the Warrior Scouts to do their thing. This is looking dicey. He's going to start to move out now. One and a half minutes on the clock. He's going to go for it. Does have a bombard. But the Toll Outpost. And the second keep as well. Oh my god. Going to, he looks like he's going, yeah, he's making he's making a move for the south sacred site, but there's two keeps and a toll outpost, and he's somehow going to get on it. And he's hemorrhaging villagers again, 124 villagers. Louis Empty is killed. Sofa starting to 
really go down in numbers. So our post will be taken down. Still a minute remains, but only one bombard. It would take way too long to get the keep down. Again, still losing villagers. I think the warrior scouts are starting to dwindle in numbers. Oh no, villagers in the north. Getting pushed back. Sacred site. He does have a, a unit or two, but they're going to get sniped by the keep. And so he'd have to sacrifice a lot of units for this. And it doesn't seem likely. Just not enough spearmen. There's too many cavalry units that could get on top of the archers. Got Mustafadi warriors coming on the back line. Does have incendiary arrows. They're taking the fight. Here come the Marlins charging on through. Looks to take out the bombard, maybe. Archers trying to get surround on the bombard to keep it alive. But there's just too many units. Marlins getting that surround. The archers are going to be taken down really quickly. And then the Bombard. And, well, that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. That's got to be the GG. 33 seconds. 3D Cat wasn't able to maintain a push. He's still at 169 population, to be fair. But he just can't make a way in. And if he does go to the Sacred Site now, there's cavalry riding the back of his base. Already down to 95 villages. That'll drop even further. That's got to be over, guys. 15 seconds. He's going to try it, though. Does have a couple of Musafari Warriors on the Sacred Site. And even if he does decap it, at what cost? The cost is his economy. Villagers are scampering for their lives. And two keeps with cannon in place. Well, one of them got cannon in placements at least. I mean, to be fair, he does have a lot of units here, 3D cap, but he's sacrificing something a bit bigger. Sacrificing his economy. And now as long as cat actually keeps a unit on them, it won't reset or won't decrease the, uh, the capping of the sacred site. And with every cannon in placement, I mean, he probably could put just villagers on the sacred site. Decides against it. Going to wait for the cannon placement to do it thing. its thing. 10 seconds. It is it's actually going down, but he's losing villagers as well. Look at that on the back. Oh, it's looking rough. He's sending reinforcements there to deal with it. But he's losing villagers quickly. It's halfway on the capping. He's got cannon placements. I mean, ultimately, as long as he keeps a unit here, the Marlians. Yeah, Louis Empty's lost it. He doesn't have enough now. Spearman numbers lacking. Cavalry will take out even the spearmen. Only a handful of archers. Now, they might be elite and they might have composite bows, but it won't be enough. Pushed off the sacred site. Sacred site remains. It's ticking down seven seconds. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't have to wait for the ticking timer. He knows he's out. The Abbasid Dynasty have to tap out. I hope you guys enjoyed this casting game on YouTube. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy the content. Take care and see you next time.